So here's why it's not really a good idea to wind your wire around some type of, you know, plastic former. Basically what happened in just a short time I ran this thing. Uh, the last video, right? So it starts warping. All right, got this other deal here. This is using the UCC 27322 and the IRFP 260N from Amazon. So at 30 volts, cut that on. And again, I got the little diamond, diamond bit tip on there or whatever. So it actually kind of instantly starts lighting up part of it kind of like how a normal plasma flame would. I was hoping it wouldn't do that because it's kind of like drowning out. I'm going to cut this one up to about 40. All right. So you really can't see it. That's pretty serious flame. So that's about 250 watts. Pulling over six amps. Just real basic setup like that. Spits out pretty good flame for what it is. So again, if I put glass on that, that'll actually uh, look pretty serious. This little diamond bit actually works out pretty good. So that's only a little bit over, that's not quite, uh, I don't know, one, 175 on the drain that's reaching up to, right? So I actually could run that a little higher. But one thing I noticed was a couple of capacitors on there getting pretty warm. So now, yeah, now it's uh, changing colors a little bit because it's heating that thing up a whole lot. And it looks like my tape is starting to keel over. All right, so since the coil got jacked up, I took the same circuit, wound a different coil, used a different coil. That one's close to six megahertz. And uh, same circuit under there, just kind of got it shielded. But instead of the Schmidt trigger oscillator deal, so this is basically the little board I was using before. It's got a little LM317 for the gate drive power supply that I can adjust, uh, you know, just to trim power and whatnot. Schmidt trigger down there. Right, so while you know, so long as I shielded it, that seemed to work pretty handy. You know, very simple, and I can you know just vary the oscillator frequency to do a fixed frequency. Instead, I'm using a PLL, uh, the VCO off of a PLL chip. So it's actually not the CD4046; it's the faster one uh, that actually goes up to like 38 megahertz, something like that. Kind of just playing around here. I've more you know, it's pin compatible, so I've more or less thrown it on the same kind of circuit, changed a couple things around. Another uh, 74 HC14 here. I've actually got two of them just sort of playing around with. I think typically I end up with noise issues using these chips a lot of times. I uh, can't really remember if I ever resolve that or, or what more or less happens, but I think a lot of times I just deal with a little bit of noise I've got there, and then at the end result, the gate driver I'm using ends up cleaning that up enough, right? So it's fairly decent. So if I cut that guy on, right now it's set to like 5.3. So you can see what happens with the with that dirty square wave I'm feeding to the gate, which to be honest is not all that dirty. It's not it's acceptable in my opinion, um, but I end up with that high duty cycle set like fifty six percent. It just goes up and up as I increase the frequency, but you know this one can go like way up there. It starts wigging out once I get over uh, twelve or something like that. Uh, but got it going down to about four, right? So that's on the gate of the MOSFET. No coil power right now, but that's basically the same deal. I'm just using the VCO there. And if I want to, I can try feedback, which right now is just grounded out, but I'm not totally sure how I'm going to work it out yet. Uh, so anyway, just to sort of test that a little bit, I've got this coil, which is going to be about 5.8, 5.9 megahertz. Just got a single turn off thrown around, and I'm uh, gonna power that at about 17 volts. Cut that on. So I need to sort of adjust a little bit. There you go. So I got the same problems, same interference problems. Moving my hand around still affects it, even though this shielding does get rid of that a whole lot. With the coupling that it's got, which is actually fairly low, it's already pulling almost five amps, so that's 80 watts. 
at uh, 17 volts or so, right? If I bring it up to like 20, I'm already, yeah, so that's about 100 watts, 20 volts. That's actually not too bad, you know, just for what it is, right? Tune that up a little bit more. Can't really see it. That's, no, that's not a bad little flame. Yeah, 100 watts, 20 volts. <laughs> so just moving that coupling down ever so slightly is really going to drop that current. All right. Yeah, I just nudged it. Dropped it maybe amp and a half, something like that, an amp. You know, as it stands, with the way that this thing is catching all this noise, it's probably not going to work out too good just poking an antenna out here and running it around. Plus, I'm not real sure about this particular chip, right? This actually has three phase comparators rather than two, like the CD4046. I haven't really read up, you know, on the differences of them. I might have to go with some type of current transformer for the feedback, and I'm not real sure how I'm going to go about it. But again, yeah, same deal. Seems to work. So, so far... Not really noticing much difference between this and that guy, except I will say this probably was still a little bit more uh, finicky about maintaining a certain frequency and just the overall tuning. Once I got up to, you know, the 5 megahertz region, it just got real difficult. Whereas, you know, this guy seems to be a little bit more reliable. But again, I don't really see much point, you know, going 5, 6, 7 higher than that with stuff like this if you're just looking for the, the hot flame, right? I think 2, 3 megahertz is totally fine and it makes everything a lot easier. You get cleaner waveforms, have less ringing, less issues typically. All right, and here's going to be antenna feedback like that with the hot saw wonky so pins 11 and 12 on that chip they're not set right for this frequency they're just not set right in general so i actually have to put the center frequency about 7.4 megahertz with a 60 percent duty cycle to uh get it to feedback at all at 17 volts at which point it gets sort of a semi lock that uh doesn't track all the way through loading and then it'll go back down to like 5.9 right let's see if i can get it tuned To draw okay so I had to move the antenna pretty close right so there you go and it's pulling over 5 amps 17 volts so that's like 90 watts so again that bumps it back down to like 5.9 or so so while that is running off feedback now antenna feedback it doesn't have a very good lock right so it can easily lose that lock it's kind of jumping in and out it's really struggling just to try to maintain that. Alright. So, if I play with that antenna, we've got to get that, get it to start acting differently. So again, I don't really like antenna feedback for that reason. But there you go, that works. About almost 6 megahertz seems to work. Not too bad. 17 volts <laughs> right so i would probably much rather tune this to uh you know much looser coupling there i mean really i need to retune this whole thing this is just a mock-up but lower coupling so i'm not actually pulling five you know six whole amps at only 17 volts right so it does work just kind of bootleg like that but again it doesn't start up on its own or anything so not sure what's going on there so i have to play with the pot settings to uh, see if i can get that tuned a little better that's not bad so i probably will try to run run it like that feedback using this chip at a certain particular frequency you can see that's not very good tuning but it's not like i'm going to blow the uh, fed up running it like that it's just going to develop heat it's kind of curious since i got it locked what happens if i bring up the voltage Yeah, it starts to wig out. I don't really want to bring it up too much with it being out of tune, but yeah, I can more or less just keep cranking it up and get a bigger flame running off uh, feedback.